Hello, Channing Benson, Splits Experimentation Advisor, here with another video. This one about across metrics, why we do not calculate statistical significance for across metrics, and why they might still be useful to you in judging the outcome of an experiment. First, let's look at where a metric gets defined as an across metric. We have three metrics here, one of which is total booking dollars across users. Let's take a look at that one. And you'll notice the key part here is this measure as section. And right now we're saying measure as sum of event values. And if you notice at the top, we've got statistical comparison possible where we're measuring per user. And here's the ones we're talking about in this video, statistical comparison not possible measured across users. And in this case, we're doing a sum of event values. Um, the event in particular is booking and the value field is price. So what this metric is going to do is for every booking event for a particular treatment for a split, it's just going to add up the value of the, the price field and put it in a single value for the entire metric for, for each treatment. Now let's go and see what that metric result looks like for, for an actual split. So, so here we're looking at a split. We've got a bunch of metrics here. This is front end show more info. We've got some metrics impact. You notice we have some, some red cards, some green cards, and then the ones of interest here are these blue cards because both of these are across metrics. Here's the one we were just looking at, which was total booking dollars across users. So let's, and it says, you know, it's up 27.99%. Um, in this case, that's comparing the baseline of none to the treatment of show text. So show text is showing for this particular metric, it's increased uh, almost 28% um, for the show text treatment as compared to none. So, but let's, let's drill down on this metric and, and, and see what actual data we have here. Um, the key part to look here is um, at the bottom, when we're looking at our underlying data, um, we've got a total, which is the total booking dollars, all of the booking events for, for each of these treatments, none and show text, accumulated over the life of the experiment. And, and you can see there were 3,000, or I'm sorry, uh, 3,500 users who got the uh, none and, and almost that same exact number who got show text. And then here's the total um, of the booking dollars for, the, for those two particular treatments. Um, the key thing here is that there's only a single number for all of those users. And therein lies the reason for when we display these cards for metrics that are that are measured across users, that we give it this note of statistical comparison not possible because metric grouped across users. Let's look at that topic in a little more detail now. Here's, here's a, a hypothetical example, a very simple hypothetical example um, with small numbers, so, so it's easy to understand. And here we have a split that's, that's measuring some difference um, in an educational application and we're, we're, we're students are our experimental subjects. And in each case, we've got, we've got 12 students in the, in the green treatment, 12 students in the red treatment, and, and we're gonna take a look at what their values are. And so we're measuring it across metric, um, how many classes registered across the treatment. And again, the key part here is we only have a single number to represent this data. And let's, let's throw some hypothetical numbers in here. Um, for the green, there was a total of 72 classes registered, and the, in the red, 36 classes registered. So that's interesting. It looks like the green treatment is, is twice as good. Um, but the key thing we want to look at is, is, are we really affecting the behavior of the people who, or the students who saw that treatment consistently? in a way that would lead us to believe that there's a causal relationship between whatever the green treatment is that, that makes it better than the red treatment. So here's, here's one example of how those numbers 72 and 36 might be distributed amongst the 12 students. And here we see that, that there's, a, there's a pretty consistent distribution. Um, all of the green treatments are five or above, all of the red treatments are four or below. And so, you know, in this particular case, uh, it would be easy to see that, or it probably would be clear to see that, that there's, there's a relationship that the red is increasing the number of classes that, that students um, register for consistently. And, you know, you would see that because you could look at some other statistical. If you had these measured per student and we had a data point 
for every student in the treatment, you could get things like what was the mean number of, of classes they registered for, what was the standard deviation, and, and, and compute a p-value. Um, but whereas in, in, in our case of having a cross metric, we only have two numbers to do that measurement, the 72 and the 36. So here's another example of how those 72 and 36 numbers might have, might have shown up. And in this case, you can see that in the, in the green treatment, there's, there's, there's four outliers or four values that are consistently higher. Um, and then in the, in the red treatment, they're all, they're all pretty much around four, two, three. Um, they're, they're pretty consistent. So in this case, um, it's, it's not entirely clear that the green would be the better treatment for encouraging students to register for more classes and encourage a few of them to do so, but, but other students in that group registered for fewer classes than, than those than in the red treatment. So this is why we don't do statistical significance for across metrics. There's just not enough data for us to make a statistical conclusion about which treatment is, is better in a causal manner. So that might lead you to, to ask the question, um, what, what, good are these, what good are these across metrics if, if I can't make a, a, a statistically significant conclusion about them? And the answer is, um, don't use them to do that. The answer is, um, you can use them to get a general idea of, of how a particular um, split is operating. They work well as organizational metrics where they would show up um, in a split where maybe the focus of, of the split is not um, booking dollars, but it's something that you want to keep an eye on to understand, you know, what it's doing in a general way. Um, I will say with, with that caveat, if you do want, you know, for your key metrics for a split, those obviously should always be something where you're measuring per user or per experimental unit so that you can make that, that conclusion to a statistical certainty. So that's the why and wherefore of cross metrics. I hope this video was useful to you. Until next time, Channing Benson, Splits Experimentation Advisor.